Welcome to IELTS Band Up, where IELTS is made easy. Hello everybody, Adam here with another IELTS Band Up video. I've got a very special video for you today. Um, I'm interviewing one of my very good friends, Patrick Laird, who is currently an IELTS examiner. Um, it's not his real name, but because he is a current examiner, I have to hide his information and you know, I just don't want him to get in trouble. So unfortunately, I will be preventing you from seeing his handsome face. You're just stuck with me. In the interview, this is one of you know a few, it's a long interview where we talk about a variety of topics, things related to IELTS, how examiners really think. So I think you'll really find it useful. Please, if you could, subscribe, tell other people. This channel is very useful. Um, between the two of us, we have 20 years of IELTS examining experience. So I really hope you like this. Please subscribe and enjoy the interview. One more thing I want to mention is I apologize for the sound quality. I'm not sure whether it was the Zoom software or my microphone, but uh, Patrick sounds quite clear. I don't. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the sound quality. Uh, you can hear me well, but again, I, you know, I'm a little disappointed in the sound quality, but I'm very happy with the content. So enjoy the video. How do you know when somebody's using obvious memorized language? Well, that's a difficult, yeah, good question. I mean, it's, it, I, it doesn't fit with what, with the, the rest of the stuff they're saying basically um so you might have someone who would use a, a phrase the classic i think in korea from some of the videos that i've seen is frankly speaking yeah but you'd only use that when you when you when you're talking about you know possible differences in opinion so if you if i say like you know do you like living in a house or apartment and they say frankly speaking i like living in a in a house it's like right. well it doesn't fit does it so no so my you, you my know. favorite experience with that, and, and I, I don't know if you have any, because it is fun to have a little laugh at this, but my favorite experience was I went to the countryside in Korea, mm. and I'm not joking, every candidate that I had, when anything came up to do with their youth or something they did when they were younger, mm -hmm. it's hard to say it with a straight face, but every single candidate said, when I was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> That's a, a, it's a good idiom, but it is. Uh, but like yeah. once, like once candidate number seven in a row has used it and not just once, you know, like uh, okay. every time, like it was about something they'd done when they were younger, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, okay, these people have been coached. Um, they're really jamming this in and it, it can, it can kind of turn the examiner off of it and they, they become a bit more sensitive to it being a bit of a, I don't want to say a charade, but yeah. you know, like it's not, genuine and our no, ears it, our ears kind of tune into like okay let's let's find your real ability right yeah that heightens the examiner and you and then you you're kind of looking for if if you're kind of alerted to someone using language that it's not necessarily natural then you become heightened to the grammar right as well so and you really examine that a little bit more carefully or listen out because if someone uses like knee high to a grasshopper, that's really, really high vocabulary. And right. if their grammar doesn't fit with that, then you think, oh, okay, it's probably just it almost, uh, memorized. It almost gets thrown out. Like it's almost like, like if that's the only idiomatic language they use, for me, it almost gets thrown out. It's like you, you can't get one point for idiomatic language if that's no, the I, only it, thing you use, right? It has to be sustained across, across the test, I think. Right. That's, yeah and i don't know if you're like me but you probably are like we once we feel like someone's using a lot of memorized language we go into an extra gear to flesh it out in part three like we i i purposely try to get people out of their comfort zone i don't I think know that's about the, you. That, that, yeah that's part of that's part of part three is to give people an opportunity but to also to probe to see if that's you know that's your job as an examiner you need to you need to gather as much evidence as you can to make right. sure that the band score that you're giving is the correct one so yes you need to probe and you need to give an opportunity for people to to use the wide ranging vocabulary especially in part 3 right and i know you're well again i know you're still examining but for me i don't know whether you agree or disagree but 
part one is to kind of put me in an overall band for asking questions later. Um, exactly. But I almost for me during the part one, like about where they live or their job, and either the, the two general questions, maybe it's about p- plants or you know something, you know, boats, random. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say that. But for me, it doesn't really matter what they say in those questions. It, I get a general feeling, yeah. but like, you know, the, the game doesn't really start till part two. Yeah, if 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 I may take this opportunity to to just give like examine a hack, this is this is how I mark the test from part one mm. onwards. Like you said, part one is to give you a general idea, and you're meant to put someone within one or two bands. And what I concentrate on in that part is pronunciation, influence, and coherence, and the confidence of the communicator. Right. Like you say, you as an examiner, you actually have to pay quite a lot of attention to timing and making sure you get through your questions at that point in right. part one, because there is a number of questions you have to get through. So I don't really pay all that much attention to grammar and vocabulary because the interactions are quite short. You get to part two, as an examiner, you have a minute and a half to two minutes to listen very carefully to what the candidate is saying. So I take that opportunity to really listen out for grammar in particular because part two is related to, you know, personal experience in the main, right. I'm not expecting the candidate to, to, to put like a wide, wide range of vocabulary in that the vocabulary section really is for, is for part three. So in part two, I look at the grammar and I think about the mistakes that they're making and the, the structures that they're using. And then part three is to kind of listen out for the vocabulary and to test and to, to push and challenge and see if I can help you know, with the questions to bring that candidate up, maybe half a band score. If, if right. you can, if that, if that candidate can give really good, strong answers, have a coherent argument and use vocabulary. So part, part one, fluency, coherence, and pronunciation. Part two is about grammar. Part three is vocabulary. And, you know, can you give coherent answers? Can you push yourself up into the higher bands? Right. Um, and I'm, I couldn't agree more. The only thing that I would add, um, and again, every examiner is slightly different. Yeah. Um, in the part two, for me, I'm listening a lot for, I'm listening more for coherence and cohesion, cohesion than I am just for grammar because that's when you have much. That's when the and 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 start to add up, right? And yeah. I know it's it's such a that's my hack, right? Like, if you can just use if you can just avoid using and and say also in addition, it's just such a little thing, but it's something we're trained to look out for right and any kind of referencing like those things or during those days like those kind of referencing backwards they they stand out especially because they are giving a long turn right they're talking for two minutes and that's their best chance to show for me anyway a range of uh you know connecting you know discourse markers yeah i think this the structure is important and i would actually say that it's really important for lower level candidates from some of the examining that I've done in in other countries where um, some of the candidates are really, really high, some are also very low as well. Right. The connectors provide a structure because they're so confident and because they can be fluent and coherent in other ways, right. the connectors are, aren't as important. But for lower, the mid-level candidates, you know, the, the band sixes to band seven, or maybe even fives, those connectors like you talk and adding structure are absolutely crucial. Right. Thank you very much for watching, and here's some more videos that you might be interested in. Please subscribe, please share it with people as this would really help me a lot. Give it a thumbs up, add some comments, and I wish you the best of luck on your next IELTS test.